Researchers have found that the Grand Canyon is missing rocks that should have been there for over a billion years. For decades, this phenomenon has served as a source of concern for the scientific community. They discovered after noticing that rocks with ages ranging from 1.4 to 1.8 billion years were found next to rocks with ages ranging from 520 million years. What did researchers find when they excavated the Grand Canyon? Let's figure out what scientists have to offer the world only on the unknown facts. The Grand Canyon is a massive canyon that was carved out by the Colorado River. It is located in the high plateau region of the northwest corner of Arizona in the U.S. The Grand Canyon is famous for its incredible shapes and coloration. The Colorado Plateau is a huge area that covers a big chunk of the southwestern U.S. The Colorado Plateau is primarily made up of horizontally stratified rocks and lava flows. The Grand Canyon is located in the southwestern portion of the Colorado Plateau. The canyon is an expansive valley that has been artistically sculpted, and it features between its outer walls a plethora of towering peaks, butts, gorges, and ravines. It extends in a winding course from the mouth of the Pariah River near Lee's Ferry and the northern boundary of Arizona with Utah to Grand Wash Cliffs near the Nevada State Line, a distance of approximately 277 miles. The first portion of the canyon, which extends from Lee's Ferry to the confluence with the Little Colorado River, is known as Marble Canyon. Its width ranges from approximately 175 yards to 18 miles. In addition to the main canyon, some of the smaller canyons and plateaus surround the Grand Canyon. More than a mile, about 6,000 feet or 1,800 meters, below the rim of the Grand Canyon is where you'll find the canyon's greatest depths. The Grand Canyon National Park encompasses the entire river's length from Lake Powell, which was formed by Glen Canyon Dam in 1963, to Lake Mead. The section of the canyon that is the deepest and most spectacularly beautiful is 56 miles long, and it is located in the central part of the park, formed by Hoover Dam in 1936. The north rim of the Grand Canyon is roughly 1,200 feet higher than the south rim, which is at an elevation of approximately 8,200 feet. The Grand Canyon is predominantly red, but its several layers, or groups of layers, each have their unique shade, such as buff and gray, delicate green and pink, or brown, slate gray and violet at the canyon's depths. The Grand Canyon's exposed granite walls reveal a time scale of Earth's history, which is arguably more important and significant than the canyon's incredible grandeur and splendor. When it comes to documenting geologic history, nowhere on Earth can compare to the Grand Canyon. However, the record from the canyon is neither continuous nor exhaustive. Many millions of years are missing because of huge voids in the geologic record caused by erosion and the lack of subsequent deposition of rock layers. As a result, the large unconformity in geologic time is only concealed by a thin, distinct surface separating rock strata of very different ages. This is a condensed version of the geological timeline of the canyon's layers. The inner gorge's 2.5 billion year old crystallized, twisted, and deformed unstratified rocks are composed of Archean granite and schist. The Proterozoic limestones, sandstones, and shales that lie on top of those older rocks have a combined age of more than 540 million years. Much of the canyon's walls are made up of Paleozoic rock strata, which date back more than 300 million years and are made up of limestones, freshwater shales, and cemented sandstones. Normally, a thick sequence of Mesozoic rocks, about 250 to 65 million years old, would lie above those strata in the geologic record, but Mesozoic rocks have been completely washed away in the Grand Canyon. However, you may still find Mesozoic rocks in the area, in the shape of cliff terraces in vermilion, white, and pink colors in southern Utah. A few miles southeast of the canyon and in the western Grand Canyon proper are sheets of black lava and volcanic cones some of which are considered to have been active within the past thousand years. The Colorado River's present channel wasn't established more than six million years ago when the canyon was already a mile deep. The enormous cutting capacity of the Colorado River can be attributed to the river's high speed and volume, as well as the vast quantities of mud, sand, and gravel it carries rapidly downstream. Average daily sediment loads on the Colorado River were estimated at half a million tons before the construction of Glen Canyon Dam. The elevation of the area steepened the river's channel and allowed for deep entrenching, creating conditions favorable to strong erosion. The river's cutting activity created the deepest part of the Grand Canyon, 
but the canyon's enormous width can be attributed to weathering processes including wind, temperature, and chemical erosion, as well as the quick wear of softer rocks. Sediment erosion and deposition along the river were studied in a March 2008 experiment in which water equal to around 40% of the river's original flow was released from Glen Canyon Dam for 60 hours. The experiment was being monitored by scientists, and they saw that after the release, sand was deposited along the riverbanks in various places. What new information was obtained from the Grand Canyon? The technique of thermochronology was utilized by researchers to determine what happened to the Grand Canyon's missing boulders. They employed a variety of different chemical analysis techniques to determine the amount of heat that was stored in a rock when it was heated. The findings of this study point to the possibility that certain events or events were responsible for the peculiar gap in the geological record. It was hypothesized that this occurrence took place about the same time as the supercontinent Rodinia disintegrated in a violent manner. Geologically speaking, the eastern half of the Grand Canyon went through distinct transitions than the western half of the canyon did. In the Grand Canyon, scientists have discovered evidence that prehistoric reptiles once roamed this region. What exactly did Alan Krill discover when he was exploring the Grand Canyon? Alan Krill came across a pebble that had a pattern on it that resembled footprints. He snapped several photographs and then emailed them to Stephen Rowland, who examined them and determined that the objects in question were the fossilized remains of once living organisms. Rowland had theorized that the fossil track could be 313 million years old and could have originated from an amniote, which is an animal that lays eggs with hard shells. Amniotes are known to have existed approximately 313 million years ago. The separation of the footprint from the manna catcher allowed it to remain in relatively excellent condition. The age of the footprints, which were found on a rock, was determined to be 330 million years old after researchers observed two separate imprints. Roland spotted two different species of reptiles moving diagonally across the field. In addition to this, he observed that one of the reptiles was roughly a foot long and moved in a manner that is referred to as lateral sequence. This is a highly significant finding because it demonstrates that the lateral sequence gait was utilized way back when vertebrates were just getting their start in the animal kingdom. The research that Roland did on the footprints may have been met with some opposition. Nevertheless, the caverns in the Grand Canyon are full of sloth feces and mummified bats, and sloths, birds, wood rats, mountain goats, and bats have all lived there at one time or another. In a canyon in Colorado, researchers discover fossilized feces from the extinct Chester sloth. Caves in the ramparts of the canyon were discovered by researchers to have been inhabited by a Chester ground sloth that weighed 500 pounds and had been extinct for more than 10,000 years. Radiocarbon dating was used to analyze the feces, which revealed both the diet of the animal and the types of plants that were native to the area. Because of dams and other man-made conditions, the Colorado River is on the verge of running dry. People are conducting research into the past of the Grand Canyon as a result of a recent discovery. The Colorado River is on the verge of drying up, and the Grand Canyon condors once fed on creatures that are no longer around to provide food for them. This could have led to the bird's extinction. The Colorado River began its journey in the Rocky Mountains and winds its way through canyons, deserts, and waterfalls on its route to the Grand Canyon. From there, it enters the Gulf of California after passing through the Grand Canyon. Researchers have discovered that if certain measures are not implemented, the river will run dry in a relatively short amount of time. The constructions of dams and changes in the Colorado River's course are two human activities that environmentalists believe have degraded the river's quality of life. The flow of the river through the Grand Canyon is as strong as ever, although the current water level is far lower than it was in the past. Environmentalists believe that dams and the redirection of rivers are the primary causes of this, which is why individuals who are interested in going whitewater rafting in the Grand Canyon should do so as soon as possible. According to the opinions of various specialists, uranium mining in the Grand Canyon can be hazardous to people. It is true that the Grand Canyon contains uranium, but the level of radiation there is quite minimal, thus it is perfectly safe for anyone to go there. However, there are abandoned mines in the Grand Canyon that present a risk to the people who choose to make their homes there. When the uranium rush began again, 
people headed back to the Grand Canyon region to begin mining once more. However, for the previous 20 years, uranium mining has been prohibited on one million acres of land surrounding the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon's Havasupai people were removed from their land against their will. People who have lived in the area now known as the Havasupai tribe have called the Grand Canyon home for a very long time. They inhabit a broad region that may be found to the east of the Bill Williams mountain range and down to the tiny Colorado River. On the Colorado Plateau, to the east of the Moen Kopi Wash, and quite a distance from the Grand Canyon, was where the Supai people lived. They did not meet any European explorers until the late 1800s when they arrived at the canyon and followed the road formed by the Hopi Havasupai and ancient Puebloans. Prior to that time, they were the only people in the area. More than 12,000 years have passed since people first settled in the area that is now known as the Grand Canyon, and the archaeological work housed in the Tucson Ruins Museum is the most comprehensive of its kind in the region. Mogollon monster spotted in the Grand Canyon. The odd characteristics of the creature sighted there, a strange beast known as the Mogollon monster, has been reported in the area surrounding the Grand Canyon. The first sighting of the Mogollon monster was made in 1903 by a man named I.W. Stevens. He described the creature as having a long white beard and white hair on its head. It is stated that the Mogollon monster stands seven feet tall, has hair that can be either black or reddish in color, and does not have a face, chest, feet, or hands. In addition to that, it has enormous feet that leave footprints that are roughly 22 inches long and has a putrid odor. The majority of campers and hikers in the region said that the Mogollon monster would visit their campsites at night and take care of any problems that arose on its own. That's all for the video today. We will be right back. Until then, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.